Okay, this is a tutorial on how to create a Linux virtual machine using VMware Player. I've downloaded and installed VMware Player and I'm going to create a virtual machine. You can see I have three virtual machines already, a Fedora 16 virtual machine, an Ubuntu, and a Windows Server 2008 virtual machine. This one is in a suspended state right here. This one is powered off and this one right here is also powered off and you can just go to the virtual machine you go to power and then you can that's where you either suspend or power off or play your virtual machine so to start them up all I have to do is select it and then hit play virtual machine now the first time I did this tutorial for Ubuntu and for the Fedora what I recommended was downloading the operating system for these two um, Linux distributions and here that is on the desktop and then just installing it from the desktop but if you do that you will not be able to edit the settings when you install it so for instance if I said file create new virtual machine I get a new virtual machine wizard here and then it says hey we'll just do it right from the dip uh, from the uh, ISO file right here and so the first time I did it I just clicked here and I went and I got it from the ISO file, right? Or you could do it from the disk directly. But what I'm going to do this time is, and I think this is the best way to do it for me, is I'm going to install the operating system later, and the first thing I'm going to do is create the virtual machine with a blank hard disk. So I'll hit next, and then I'll tell it what operating system or I'm going to use for my virtual machine. And you can see I've got Ubuntu here, right? Um, it's not 64-bit, so I'm just going to say the regular Ubuntu. And then I'll hit Next, and then I'll call it Ubuntu 11.10-2. It's my second one I'm doing here. I'll hit Next. I'm going to give it the hard disk size. The recommended size for Ubuntu is 20 gigabytes. That's fine. I'll hit Next. Now what I can do is, is I can hit finish or I can customize my hardware and I'm going to do that. I'm going to customize my hardware. So I'll click customize hardware and this is important. By default it wants to give Ubuntu 512 megabytes of RAM to work with and I have found that that's not going to be good. So when I did my default install the first time and I just clicked on the ISO file to build my virtual machine it set it up with 512 megabytes of RAM and then I really couldn't use the virtual machine well at all because there wasn't enough RAM allotted to the virtual machine. So right now I'm going to change this right now and I'm going to at least change this to um, 1024 right or what I could do is I could change this to even higher. Let's go to like maybe something like uh, a gig and a half. So 1024, let's say plus 512 um, would be 536. So that would be a gig and a half of memory, right? So that'll be fine. And then I'll go to processors and I could say number of processor cores. I could use one or two right here. So I'll set it to let's say two. I can go to the CD drive, right? And I could say use physical drive, connect it power on. I'm going to need that because I've burned a copy of this disk here and I'm going to install it from the disk, not from this ISO file. But if I wanted to, I could actually just select this and maybe use that. Let, we could try that. If I want to use the disk in the CD, I could use this. If I want to use the ISO file image, I could use this, right? Just use physical drive and auto detect it. To burn the disk I right clicked on the Ubuntu image and hit burnt disk image using Windows 7 here so that I did that already. Um, but right here would be an easy way to do this if I wanted to use that image file. Alright I'm going to go to network adapter connect it power on instead of using a NAT connection I'm going to use a bridged connection which I uh, like better and um, let's see here display. Alright, that looks good. I don't see hard drive here, so I'm wondering about the hard drive. I'm going to go back, store virtual disk as single file. Alright, that looks good. Okay, 
notice my settings are here inside and I'll hit finished and now the virtual machine is built here but it hasn't installed Ubuntu yet to install Ubuntu what I want to do is power on the virtual machine and hopefully it will see the disk that I have in the disk drive so we'll see if that works okay it looks like it found the installation disk and so I'll be able to go through the installation process and install Ubuntu 11.10 Okay, down at the bottom here, you'll see that there is a recommendation to install VMware tools, which will help improve mouse movement, video performance, and all kinds of things. And you can install these tools, remind me later or never remind me. So I'll hit um, remind me later, and that way, um, once I'm done with the installation process, then the t I'll get the VMware tools the additional tools uh, downloaded to my virtual machine and I can install them later. Alright, I will install Ubuntu and it's connected to the internet. I could download updates while installing. I can install third-party uh, software if I want to right now but I'm not going to do any of that. I'm just going to hit regular install just like the students in the lab okay um, alright it doesn't detect any operating systems because this is a virtual hard drive with nothing on it so I'm just gonna hit continue and install now and I'm using the entire disk which is fine I'm not partitioning the disk or doing anything fancy um, just a regular install I'll pick my location set my keyboard pick my username and password and if I wanted to I could encrypt my entire hard drive um, my whole file system uh, that is encrypted before we even log into the computer. If you do this though and uh, you forget your login you're not going to be able to recover your files because they're all going to be encrypted. So um, uh, I'm not going to encrypt my home folder. Alright now it just needs to go through the process and finish the install so I'm going to pause the video and then when it's uh, near finished I'll start it up again okay the files have been copied and looks like now it's installing the system okay retrieving files Okay, looks like the install is almost finished and we're going to be left with a message to restart our computer. Okay, the restart is happening and looks like the installation went alright. Disk is ejected. All right, notice it says, please remove installation media and close the tray, if any, and then press enter. So I took out the disk, the install disk that I had burned, and I'll press enter. Now, if your mouse is caught 
in the machine and you don't have access to your cursor and you want access to your cursor just press control alt on your keyboard and it releases the cursor right so I press control alt and my cursor is released right if I click in right now my cursor might be captured and I won't be able to remove it from the virtual machine now typically you can do that really easy just by dragging right off of the virtual machine but sometimes you can't and if that happens just press control alt on your keyboard let's see if I can log in and it looks like I've got a successful login notice I might have to scroll a little bit unless I go to full screen mode now with VMware tools installed it makes it really easy to go to full screen mode so you will want to install those VMware tools another thing is down here in the VMware box you'll see these are your virtual devices to tell you what's running so you know we've got the hard drive spinning the virtual hard drive that is a virtual CD-ROM uh, the floppy is uh, grayed out I've got the monitor status no this is the network adapter I'm sorry the network adapter printer uh, sound card and then this is Bluetooth and USB which I believe are grayed out right now otherwise they would have some lights just like that so um, my next video I'll show you how to install the VMware tools